Hey everyone, so um, this video is gonna be about chapter number two in Irene's questline. Gonna try to make the stories a bit more compact here. So we're gonna start off by talking to Louis the Desiree. So um, we've, we've finished uh, last chapter with um, the two different NPCs and uh, telling them to stop fighting and shit. Alright, so uh, now chapter number two. Um, so as you can see, he's uh, happy to see us. Welcome to Irene, the curiosity of Kirilla, blah, 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 blah. Game of Thrones. Yeah, okay. So you remember when I last time said that there's definitely a reference to Game of Thrones. Well, here it is again. So I guess these guys got really inspired by it. Speak to the great house's representatives on Irene. So I guess we'll have to do some talking. So he sends us on a request to do some talking, chatting with different NPCs. So that's what we're gonna do. Quick hint here, when you see these fireworks, the, how many stacks you have is actually representing in, in which chapter you are. So if you have only two fireworks to fire, that means you're only in chapter two. If you have four chap uh, fireworks to fire, that means you're in chapter four. All right, so once arrived, um, basically what we have to do is uh, talk to these NPCs um, because these guys are like kind of low placed in the society of Irene and we need to get information for the king on what they think because whatever they say isn't really paid so much attention to because they're like kind of peasants they don't really care what people what they think about them uh, about Irene so they stole his bombs and alchemical uh, and fireworks so Paul the Blizzard is really good at um, making magic in practice, not on theory apparently. And he comes from Gelida, it's an olive that's quite chilly, so like a cold one. They keep themselves warm thanks to the potions that they're making. And they have a different faction on their home a lot called Gelida, which are forest folks. And we know these forest folks from uh, the main olives that we're living in in Sarnout. But uh, they made the forest folks their slaves because they teach them instead. So they teach, they taught the forest folk uh, many things in exchange. The forest folks are now this, their slaves, which is called eternal loyalty. <laughs> so we're basically asking each one of these NPCs what they think about the other houses in Irene. So it seems like Paul the Blizzard is good friends with the House the Ardeur and House the Vevre as well. He likes those two. And House the Grandeur. Those three are his main friends. His enemies are House the Delis, House the Desiree, and that's really and House the Pluie. Okay, well, thanks for explaining that to us. On the other quest that I just saw, we had is that we need to prevent duels that are happening between the lower, the lower races in Irene. As you saw in chapter 1, we already forbid dueling uh, between the elves. Now, uh, the houses instead that the elves cannot duel anymore. They're paying different races such as kobolds and uh, aviax to fight for them instead. So we need to go read them a paper where it's forbidden. That is forbidden by the king to have no more duels. And that's really it. Then they stop fighting for a minute. And then they, they fight again. So this Franz de Vevre seems to be like, um, Franz de Vevre is from House de Vevre, but he's some kind of a demon hunter, so he's not really directly related to his house, but his house is focusing on music mostly. They have a lot of bards, and they have a bard academy that's doing music, and he's from the allot called Florenta. Florenta is a summerly, summer-like allot only has summer and spring lots of flowers and bushes
story about uh, Cyrano the Blizzard it was about his house that he had the king. The king died back when there was a big war going on with demons. That king used a big spell that uh, killed all the demons but unfortunately also killed the great mage. Now the great mage left a legacy that had two houses still like their uh, house of blizzard but the other houses really dislike it. This is really like a political theme all these houses and arenas like different politic political groups. So the story about the house that released uh, told by Leonore is that she really just came uh, home not too long ago so she's not really up to date in current politics in Irene. However she did tell us about the history that she knows about how house the release is famous or was famous for uh, stabilizing the portal magic to teleport between the different allots when everything was split apart uh, that made Sarno to being Sarno. Um, now over time every other race and house started to master this uh, technology of teleportation so they became more mainstream and it, they weren't really uh, uh, ruling in any kind of sort. Now when there, when somebody from their house got into the higher ups, I already forgot her name, um, Ignis I recall, uh, when Ignis got into the higher ups between the houses then they got more uh, more of a title of the moral relaxed elves and then this house the pluie So in the end, really every NPC that represents um, their house always ended their explanation about uh, which house they like and which ones they don't like. They always ended with a sentence that was pointing on they get along with every single elf from any house. It doesn't matter to them. They're not putting all the elves in the same basket when they hear that one elf is from a certain house that their, their house doesn't like then doesn't mean that they won't like that elf. They're, every single NPC said that they're fine with every elf, no matter of the house they belong to. It's just the house itself, the politics basically, that they uh, don't like. So this is about the Skulner the Fierce, this is the one that we did So Skulnar seems to be in trouble here a bit. Elves are after Skulnar. Skulnar is the uh, orc Psy that made orcs being able to be Psy since then. So he's given the mission. So Skulnar was given the mission by the king to uh, teach the unruly elves how to be ruly, how he they, how the king can control them. And the king was also interested in the fact that this orc was able to use magic. So the elves really don't want to give an answer on uh, why they're annoying Skulnar. And they want to play a game before they answer. So this is really like um, little kids. Let's play. All right. Okay. I suppose I'm going to follow her. I need to catch her. All right, that's fun. Okay, she does go quite fast. I'm assuming it's 
gonna be left, right, left, right. And we split, so I'm gonna go left again. It's kind of playing tag me. But then she keeps oh that's not her. There's the other one. Alright. This does remind me about that uh part in Final Fantasy 14 where you have to chase those elves as well or fairies actually. They all they only wanna play while well, you're like on a mission to save the world or something. Which one is the real They probably have a difference like a collab thing that one is unique. They're probably all real, doesn't matter. Oh, and she drops her mask. Deliver the mask to the fader. Stranger. So I'm assuming this is like the intro quest into the fader and the daily quest that you can get from it. So Corinne, the person that we just kited all the time, who I kited chased actually, uh, seems to be the lead uh, actress from this theater. Happens all the time. Meet Amis, Patis, and Avis. Would you feel to go somewhere? Alright, so Skull not sending us to go meet some uh, three Aviacs. So I guess we'll go and see what they say. There we go. This is where we meet them. And they want to fight, of course. Battle the AVX. Oh, and then their owner, I think. Evoc tells us to stop, and we're gonna have an escort quest. Amazing, it's at the palace. All right, so I need to go to the palace, and auto move is not yet available, so we're gonna go back with the ship. We should talk to Constance, maybe first because she's waiting for us here there we go so here we meet again evoc that sent us to the palace to meet with constance because we'll have to escort her i suppose so she's being followed by snakes apparently and uh, we need to follow her while she's going to this location to the harbor she has to deliver a letter and Evoc is with us to protect Constance. And there we go. So these Lamias are the ones that are guarding in Irene. They're only, they're like blind, but they're really good at hearing. So they hear footsteps, but the, the funny thing is that uh, Constance is flying. She's not walking. So that's something where they kind of failed at in storytelling. We can't allow them to report, so I'm assuming the letter she's delivering has to be like in secret. And the Lamias otherwise would report to the king. Don't worry, Constance, you're safe with us. Behind the corner. Okay, let's go behind the corner. This looks like an ambush again. Yep, oh my god. Knew it. This is Uriel, I think. Yeah, this is Uriel. She's asking for the letter. Of course, Constance doesn't want to give the letter. And the AVX come to help. Oh, it's Avis, Potis, and Amos. 
and it's going to be a byte. Of course, Ariel gets out. So typical for the leader always to disappear and let the others fight. There we go. Defended constants. Oh, she got hurt during the fight. She's on the floor. And we'll have to continue our journey with the letter. No red letter pluses. Spring is the time for love. Take the letter. Alright, so we're gonna go continue the mission that she was on. All the way there in the harbor messenger hello masked guest spring is the time for love that's the password okay so we have no idea what is going on with these um, with the secrecy and the letter delivering he doesn't want to tell us because he's too scared um, they'll hear or they'll see that they're doing something in secret. But something is going on here in Irene. Back into the palace. Alright, so we talked to all the houses. Grandeur, Blizzard, Febre. Oh, there were two Grandeurs actually. Is there at least two? So basically, when an elf belongs to a house, that's their last name. So these are all the Desiree. Desiree, Desiree. Desiree. Alright, so Desiree is actually the leading house. Yeah, so the information we got from the from all these NPCs that represents their house is correct. Every house likes three houses and dislikes three other houses. But each and every single one of all these houses dislike the Desiree house. So the Desiree house will have to step down uh, from control and pass the torch. Let's see what's next. To Queen Lucretia. Ah, this is the Queen. Lucretia. And this is about the secrecy. Alright, so there's a secret thing going on. And we have to deliver the message to the queen. And it's secrecy towards the king. So there's something going on between the king and the queen. That they're hiding from each other. Alright, so that's done. Will the king be angry? Don't worry about that. Just don't touch the person. Alright, so it's secret to the king because I'm assuming that she doesn't want to uh, waste the king's time with this affair. But in reality, it's about Uriel doing something bad in Irene, and the queen's aware of it and wants to finish it. Keep it a secret. Alright, that's it. That's the secret now. And we have finished in your chimney. Alright, so we completed chapter number 3. And then we have to earn again 12 Royal Goodwill. So we have to get uh, back to the dailies. So that's it for uh, this chapter. Um, I hope this was another good one. Uh, the, I learned something new again. About how the story is actually unfolding in Irene. It's really cool that they do this in parts. I'm gonna do the next one again on chapter uh, 3. I'll do chapter 3 then. Uh, actually, this is this was chapter 3. I'll do chapter 4 next video. I'll see you guys when my dailies are done. Um, I have been, been delaying stuff. Because I have a lot of stuff going on. But I'm trying my best to keep up with the content. See you guys on the next one. Peace.